They were the heroes from the future. Teenagers protecting the universe from those that would sow the seeds of chaos. Each had unique powers and abilities. And though they often had their differences, they came together to save the day as the Legion of Superheroes. Now you can be a part of their adventures and learn the history of the future in the Legion Clubhouse. Well, hello, Legion Clubhouse fans. I bet you're surprised to hear us back again this week because normally the show is every two weeks. Right. But because of some news that broke today, Thursday, June 12th, or sorry, June 13th, 2019, uh, we thought we might want to talk about it. And uh, maybe I should just title this Told You So. <laughs> because, Matthew, how long have I been saying? Seven. Yes, exactly. Seven months now I've been saying Brian Michael Bendis was going to be jumping on Legion of Superheroes. I said the same thing when he went to DC. I said, oh, he's going to be writing Superman. No one yep. paid attention to me until it was announced that, oh, he's writing Superman. And I've been saying for, I don't know, maybe seven months that he would be a new Legion of Superheroes book and he would be in charge of it. And sure enough, they announced today that uh, Bendis would be taking on the Legion of Superheroes. So before we get into some of the things that have been said, Matthew, I want to know what your initial reaction to this is. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic, but also trepidatious. Okay. Because this, I mean, this is modern DC, and mm -hmm. modern DC is kind of all over the place. I mean, for every really good story, they're like, hey, you know what we need? A 15-issue series for the Batman that laughs. So I, I just have this worry that somehow we're going to get this weird, dark, cynical, edgelordy Legion future. Well, but you're also a fan of the Five Years Later, which was all very dark and grim. But it was also dark and grim in a way that made, I think, narrative sense because mm. that was a Legion that had grown up. Okay. That was the same Legion that we had been reading about for years and years and years. And theoretically, the readers had grown up as well. And even those Legionnaires still had their moments of fun and their, you know, their crazy, wacky, doodly doodly moments. And you had a whole issue dedicated to Matter Eater Lad and the goofy things about Matter Eater Lad. And that one time he ate the miracle machine and maybe he has magical powers that even he doesn't know about. There was, I mean, it was a Giffen book. So there was an edge of whimsy. There was an edge sure. of silliness. There was an edge of goof. Even when it was all dark and grim, dark and gritty, gritty, gritty. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm, just, I'm worried that it's going to be all sprocking Zark. Well, we'll we'll find out. I mean, uh, I think DC probably wanted to wait until San Diego Comic-Con to make this announcement. But the solicitations are out like next week for September. Mm -hmm. And so the news broke, you know, a lot earlier. So this will kick off with DC Legion of Superheroes Millennium, which is a two issue series designed to explore DC's rebirth timeline which right. is bringing all the various continuities together. And that will serve as a prelude to the ongoing Legion of Superheroes series that Bendis and Ryan Sook will be, um, will be taking on. Now, here's how DC Comics describes the Legion of Superheroes Millennium. It says it follows one main character, someone Bendis says is very familiar to DC fans, who has found herself newly endowed with immortality. As the character learns to cope with her situation, she and readers will travel across a thousand years into the DC universe's future, bringing what were once desperate or uh, disparate continuities all into a single timeline that leads to the Legion's era and new titles. So we will have uh, this character looks like somebody who's blonde um, or actually a brunette or uh, brown hair or maybe whatever. a redhead or maybe a redhead or maybe it's a purple hair. Who knows? Nothing, nothing against purple hairs. So but this uh, Millennium hey. series. Will feature Supergirl, drawn by Jim Lee, Batman Beyond with Dustin Nguyen, Command D from Andrea Sorrentino, Tommy Tomorrow from Andrea Lima Araujo, I believe is how you pronounce her name, Booster mm -hmm. Gold, drawn by Nicholas Scott, OMAC, drawn by Jim Chung, uh, DC Offworld Chapter, drawn by Jeff uh, DeCall, and Legion of Superheroes, drawn by uh, uh, Ryan Sook. So the other thing that seems to be interesting in this, and I don't see it here on this one article I'm reading, I thought I read somewhere that Superman is going to be dead in this in this story or he's passed a thousand years from now. Mm -hmm. But here's a quote from Bendis who says, our legion is going to be a little di bit different than past legions. I know that sometimes in the past or sometimes in the past, the legion have gotten together because things are so peaceful. They can't stand it. Our legion is coming together out of what they think is dire necessity. Things are starting to crumble and they're crumbling fast. And it real really feels like it's a time for a new age of heroes for the first time in a millennium. That that there 
what is this? That there's a gen, genuine sense of threat. Oh, that, First time oh, okay. that there is a genuine. Yeah, that there's a genuine sense of threat to all things. That was a little hard to, to read that. Yeah. Um, but then they're going to have some different perspectives or different takes on some of these characters, which is also maybe okay, but I think we saw with the Mark Wade three boot that maybe mm. that wasn't such a great thing. Well, I mean, depending I mean, on your perspective, boot. I mean, they were trying to make it, you know, hip and now for the kids of today. And it just felt like, oh, we're just reflecting on the society of the day because Legion of Superheroes back in the Silver Age were all about, yes, let's embrace Superman. And those stories spun out of the Silver Age and all of the great things that that were there. And so there was that wholesomeness in there. And then when Wade got a hold of it, he's like, no, let's go and take a look and see what's going on in the, in the late 90s and the early 2000s. And right. let's reflect that in the series. And I think for some people, especially me, it was not. I didn't take to it. The Wade Kitson Legion had a mead spiritedness to the characters that bothered me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the central plot point of the Wade Kitson Legion is cosmic boy and brainiac five at, at a war in a war with leader for leadership rather. And I didn't care for that. I didn't, I mean, that bothered me and it set us off on the wrong foot as far as I'm concerned. And you know, there's also the problem of the fact that the creative team was in their late forties not that there's anything wrong with that, but it had very much a hello, fellow kids kind of vibe, which, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's not necessarily a terrible thing, but it was definitely noticeable for me and it was bothersome. And frankly, nobody can give Lightning Lad a decent haircut, so I don't know what that's about. Oh, yeah. Have you taken a look at some of the character designs? I like the uh, Saturn girl because the Saturn girl looks, you know, almost gender neutral in the shot that I've seen. Yeah, which I think is very interesting, although I do like how there's the Saturn symbol is not just on her chest, but it's actually kind of wrapped around her body, which I think is really kind of cool. Uh, yeah. The haircut, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, these are just probably initial character designs by Sook, but there are a couple of characters like Cosmic Boy and Lightning Lad basically slap down a template and just color it. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not really, especially down to the, and I hate this haircut and this is just my personal style is where you shave your, the sides of your head all the way up to where it's almost a Mohawk. And then you have the, uh, what's it called? The Kentucky waterfall, the, uh, the mullet <laughs> on the back, which I just think is a dumb, stupid look. Party uh, that's me front. personal. Party it's not even, back. it's not even, it's not even <laughs> party in the front. It's more like rebel in the front party in the back. Yeah, you um, know, it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, chameleon boy looks all right with his stuff. He looks chameleon-y and alien-y and yeah. lumpy. And then Shadow Lass is there and Brainiac 5 is there wearing kind of a weird, it's not quite a tunic, not quite a jumpsuit. It's like a. It looks like a, he's going a, to a wedding in New Delhi, which, you know. Yeah. It's a thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the designs are going to be interesting. I want to see how they play out in the book. I know there's another site that has a couple of uh, preview pages. Now, we don't have those yet. From DC mm -hmm. Comics, but there are some action panels and pages that look pretty good where I believe it is our main character encountering uh, Batman Beyond and just blowing some people away and also some flashbacks to what's going on with with Booster Gold. And yeah, so this all is the Millennium stuff that's coming through. So that will be interesting to to look at. But here's what Binda says about ch -ch -ch changes. It's funny because there's 34 lead characters there are a lot of perspectives that the story is going to be handled from. So, so many perspectives that almost no story will be left unturned. Not every character will see things the same way. It's like every great team. Some will be on the same page, some will not. It's going to be a time of great chaos and struggle in the galaxy, and it's up to them to get to work and figure out how they're going, how they're going, they're young. Oh, figure it out as, as they're going, they're young, which I kind of like it. So it sounds like he's not going to, even though it looks like the universe is in uh, dis, uh, disheval, upheaval, disheveled. Yes. Mm -hmm. It also looks like they're going to keep them relatively young. I don't know if they're going to be true teenagers, but they're going to be, and I, and I don't know if this is the whole point of titling it millennium, that these are going to be a reflection of millennial society today where the kids are basically fed up with everything. And that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for the kids taking over the world. Uh, but basically saying no this is the way things are going to be and setting things right and bringing peace to the galaxy and and settling all the unrest so i don't know if there's a tie-in or just the fact that we're talking about a thousand years in the future but um i'm, I'm kind of hoping that there is a little bit of that 
millennial spirit in the future Legion, which even also though could the be creative a, team is fifty and forty six. I mean, how long has Bendis been writing teenagers? Yes, exactly. Yes, that's exactly the point. So yes. I don't know. So you're not you're not in favor of that? Or are you wanting these to be older Again, people? Are you I, wanting these to be like late twenties, early thirties? Or what, what is I am the age? Bendis's age, pretty much. He's a couple of years older than we are. So I'm not saying it's gonna be a bad thing. I'm just like I I can see ways where it might be. And if they're gonna do, you know, a whole hey millennial, whatever, you really want to have somebody of that youth group as part of your, you know, mm-hmm. creative team. I know Ryan's been working since the late nineties, so he's got to be in his late thirties, early forties. Ryan Sook. Yeah. 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 I, I used know. to know a, a Chris Sook when I was younger. They're no relation, unfortunately. So no, probably. I don't know. I, I want to see what this is about. I'm very excited for it. I was kind of hoping it was going to be, it, it feels very dark and disturbing in the descriptions, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it feels very much down. It feels very much like a, perhaps a reflection of society today as viewed by many people in the world. Right. And I'm okay with that. But what I want, and this is what I liked in the Archie Legion was that even though there was chaos, there was still, Hey, we're having, let's have hope. Let's have fun. Let's be kids, but also let's take on the, the dangers of, of the day. That was not consistent with the, no. the, the Archie Legion specifically. No, not necessarily, but for a I large mean, there part were a lot of was. points where it's like, all, all is lost and we will all die. Here's 12 issues of Legion lost. <laughs> well, that is something, you know, that's a, that was a spinoff series, right? No, that actually took oh, the place was in the, the, in the main continuity. Yeah. So I mean, that was the book. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I just, I just hope that there's some hope in the story and I hope that it has fun in it. And I hope that there is, some reason for me to get excited about this, like I did with the Archie Legion and now going back into the old, old classics and, and reading them and digging out the old phone book copies and getting through that stuff. Um, I, so I guess we'll wait and see. September is just around the corner. No, it's uh, not. I think it comes. Yes, it is. It's less than three it's months just away. around the summer. Yeah. Just around the river bend, man. All right. What did we learn in this installment of the Legion Clubhouse? We've learned that Brian Michael Bendis is 51 years old. I think we also learned that if Stephen says that someone's going to be writing on a book, then you might want to listen to him and not act all shocked and surprised when suddenly it's it's officially revealed. We've also learned that Matthew wants to remind you that Stephen is a futurist and gets things right just as often <laughs> as he gets things wrong. I would say it's a little bit higher than 50%. You're right. It's about 50%, 53% of the time you're wrong. I would, say it's, a little bit, I would say it's probably more like 70% of the time I'm, I'm, on, I'm on target. That no, wraps it up for no, this installment no. of the Legion Clubhouse. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out. Uh, we'll be back uh, next time with another installment. But until then, I'm uh, Keep Hope Alive, man. <laughs> and I'm 48-year-old boy. <laughs> The Legion Clubhouse is a production of Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC, and is produced by Steven Schleicher. Your hosts were Matthew Peterson and Steven Schleicher. You can follow Matthew at Mighty King Cobra and Steven at Major Spoilers. You can follow this podcast on Twitter at Legion Clubhouse. If you have questions or comments, send them to podcast at Majorspoilers.com. I'm Jason Inman. Until next time, eat it, Grandpa. This podcast is copyright 2019 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.